What's going on, everybody? Welcome to and welcome back to another video. I am your host, celebrity and fashion photographer, Chris Cavanaugh. And in today's video, we're going to be getting into a Photoshop retouching explained video. So right now, let's get right into it. So what I'm going to do and start off first is going in with the crop tool and start expanding the background of this image. When I shot this, it was with a crop sensor lens with a telephoto, well, a crop sensor body with a telephoto lens. And with that, I lost a lot of the backdrop of what I wanted to have eventually. So what I'm going to do is go in with a color selector tool and color select the around the image where I want to match the actual color that I'm going to blend in. And then after that, as you see, I'm going to go into moving the brush stroke around to start blending the color of the brush stroke with the backdrop. I know a lot of you guys do it in you know different ways, but this is my method of going about doing this, especially when you're working with uh, shadows. This is an amazing way to be able to get those same results without losing or making it look a little bit funny uh, in the re final result. So as you see, I'm going to just start brushing around the image and getting those same tones around the actual picture. And you can always, uh, you know, maneuver your opacity with this as well to and your brush hardness to, you know, achieve this result. Now, what I'm going to do is go into Retouch into Academy, go to Frequency Separation with the Gaussian Blur. And then I'm going to go over and then deselect the high frequency layer. And what that will allow me to do is then be able to match the tones that are in the image. So as you can see, it's starting to, you know, blend in. And what I just selected was the mix brush tool. So I'm just going to start brushing this around the actual image. And as you can see, while I'm brushing it around, it's starting to, you know, uh, more so blend in from the backdrop and the actual color that I put on the image. And it will come out to be an absolutely amazing result. So let me let this render. Then I'm going to zoom in a little bit and go straight into the legs. So now what I'm going to do is go back in that same process of using the frequency separation tool in Retouching Academy. And I'm going to start brushing it along the legs to be able to blend that skin in and get a really great result. And this is going to help me get a really nice base image, a base skin tone and texture to this. And as you go, you can always just maneuver the brush stroke around. And what this is going to eliminate is a lot of, you know, skin, uh, the skin tones, if they're not, you know, kind of the same color, um, it's going to help things become more even. And then even if it's skin texture, it will make it become more as a flat base. We're just going to move it around the chest a little bit, clean that up. And if you guys have any questions in this video as well of my particular methods, please feel free to leave them in the comment section. So one thing I stress when retouching is to look at your before and after zoom in and out to kind of see the process you're going along with to see how much you know of a process you're moving in. So this here is a quick before and after of the process so far. And we're going to zoom right back in. And let's just maneuver and remove some of those details in the backdrop that's, you know, showing. It's all about those details, paying attention to the details to be able to you know, achieve a very final, fine result within the image. So just start selecting around and looking at everything that, you know, you can fix. So here's a quick, uh, uh, another quick before and after. And 
what we're going to do is try to correct this little incident that I made if we can so I'm gonna go back with the uh, history tool and kind of try to clean that up a little bit to the best of my ability if it would allow me I don't think it is so I'll just do a little bit of dodge on and there we go that'll help the process a little bit always improvise <laughs> All right. So we're going to go right back into um, Retouching Academy with the skin color tool. And then we're going to go right back in with the mix brush tool as well. I keep getting these mixed up because I changed my, re uh, my panel. I reset the panel. So I got to put those back to the way it was. But we're just going to lightly start brushing around the feet and my whole method when retouching is to always diminish never remove now of the creative direction and if you feel it in your spirit to remove you know what's there that's totally fine but i like to diminish things just to kind of keep them uh with a realistic you know texture and tone of what the skin really looks like and then as you know we keep going we can keep you know adjusting as so but I love to keep the natural look and feel within the actual image so we just zoom out and like I said do a quick before and after just to always see the process and the progress that we're making zoom right back into it And we're going to go right back into that frequency separation Gaussian blur, deselect it, and we're going to zoom right back in and uh, get, you know, just keep brushing those legs, retouching it and doing it to the best of our ability so that it still looks natural, but it's not overdone. Because a lot of this is going to be kind of like covered when I add the grain and when I kind of start doing my color grading process. Let's zoom in a little bit on the face. Let's deselect. And what we're going to do is start eliminating those stray hairs that are on the uh, the image. We have a windy looking aspect, but we just want to tackle those stray hairs that are there to just eliminate and make it just look a little bit more clean and polished than what it is with the hairs being out like they are. Let's see, there we go. And you can always achieve this result by simply going into your clone stamp tool and then you can control the opacity of this by going up to the opacities tab and just either you can have it 100% with a soft brush or you can go maybe like uh, if it was more closer, you know, to the like the picture um, with a, you know, more softer opacity to it other than the 100 percent but it all just depends on the result and the look and feel that you're going for and it's multiple uh, ways that you can go into you know be able to remove stray hairs depending on the look and feel you can also do it with the pen tool as well but it's always multiple ways to do one thing Just going to start cleaning that up as well. And like I said, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to message me on here and also feel free to comment below of this video.
One second, guys. Alright, and we're just going to get back into repeating that same process. And just fine tuning. And as you can see, the, uh, when I was actually going around with that brush tool for the background, it got a little bit on the outer edges on the hair. And we're going to definitely get that in um, Photoshop as well to deal with that. And see how we're getting just close to that. And it's just, you know, cleaning things up a little bit more, making it look a little bit more polished than what it was. make it look as natural and clean as possible but still keeping it that natural wind-blown texture and consistency there we go so now I'm gonna go back and see the process well the progress quick before and after Alrighty, get back in here. Alright, so now what we're going to do is start getting into the dodging and burning process of this. And just doing a little bit as we go. Just those simple little details that make a huge amount of, you know, flair to it. Details are everything. We're going to go and kind of try to brighten up those red bottoms a little bit more so that stands out. And just brush it around the arm just to give it a little 3D around the clavicle to bring it out a little bit more go up and change my exposure and keep brushing bringing out those highlights in the hair because once once my main thing is to be able to go in and get a clean base to the image so once you start to really apply the color grading aspect of it it turns out to you know fit well within what you've already done on the back end and then what I'm going to do is go into this and use my Photoshop color grading action for studio work called Studio LUTs that is available on my website chrisphotostudios.com I also have a 60, sorry, a 50, 15 LUTs package that allows photographers to use 15 different Photoshop LUTs in order to uh, achieve these results. And this is the Studio LUTs pack that I'm actually using right now. That's already done. And I created this one just for Studio. So what I'm going to do, I want to push this a little bit more. So I'm going to go in with the contrast and boost that up just a bit. And then after that, I'm going to go into the color balance tool and start playing with those, moving my blues around, my reds, creating a very natural result. And like I said, I'm going to take care of that, uh, that overflow for the brush. So I'm just going to go in and kind of dodge that a little bit. But you can already see, like, the the result of what me just doing that small color grading did to this image it brought brought it to life a little bit more than what it was like 
I said, we can go in and bring those highlights out as well. Those little small details make a world of a difference. We have some other things that we can take care of too, like the hands and, you know, that we're going to get to eventually. So see that discoloration within the skin? So what I'm going to do is use the eyedropper tool to go in and select the base color to what I want to then brush over and I'm going to change my opacity and I'm going to start lightly brushing it around that hand to be able to get those skin, same skin tones within and I shot this image around 2015 so this is a revised uh, retouching tutorial that I'm doing now with my experience that I know now I would have asked the makeup artist to apply foundation to the actual hand so it could be the same consistency and we just did the same thing with the legs so quick before and watch that pop of color with that retouching, uh, that color grading action. See, it just brings it alive a little bit more than what it was. It gives it a very high-end luxury feel. And this particular color grading action is called Studio LUTs, available for $10. And the 15-pack LUTs is available for $60 on my website. The link will be below on this video right here. So we're just going to go in and do that brush tool over those legs as well. Remember I said we're going to just start off with a clean base to the image when we were doing that, uh, retouching the legs prior to. And this is just giving more of that warm, glowy, uh, you know, tan look that I wanted to achieve. And then we're going to go into the selective coloring and move around the reds and the magentas and kind of bring those tones out a little bit more as well. Just those small, subtle changes, you know, make an image. This helps to bring things to life. And we're going to go kind of lighten it up a little bit. It's a little bit too much. arms and we're going to liquefy I want to bring out that waist a little bit more to just accentuate it and not do too much that it looks unnatural but we just do it a little bit to just bring a little bit of shape within the garment Bring those shoulders down a little bit. Small, subtle changes. And as you can see, I always operate outside of the actual image when doing my uh, liquefaction. So we're gonna take them right back in. Let's see, there we go. And I wanna start working on the face. So we're going to go right back into Retouching Academy and repeat that same process again with the frequency separation using 8-bit Glossian Blur 6.4. And we're going to go over here and deselect and then go back with the Mix Brush tool. You can kind of see my uh, retouching, you know, process is kind of, you know, repeatable. So we're just going to start brushing it around. And as you can see, those tones in the face and those shadows and you know, we're going to let the frequency separation and the Gaussian blur do its thing to just keep getting a clean base. And it's kind of more easier to do it with this image in particular because this was shot with a Nikon D7000. And, you know, it was with a, you know, far back. So it wasn't a huge sensor. So you're not like really picking up all the detail that you can, but we can just start making things happen. So. I'm going to go in and flatten this image and then I'm going to go right back in with the dodge tool and 
start doing those little details like the nose, creating, dodging that nose, creating a little highlight. Let's bring that up. So there you go. Don't do too much, but just do it just just right, you know, so that it's able to kind of naturally reflect the light. Look at that, that small subtle change. We're just going to start repeating this along the actual image, bringing those things out a little bit more. See how that that just made a huge difference. Getting all those highlight zones, those T zones. And just making subtle changes to like really bring that face out. Too much. There you go. Zoom out, and there we go. I hope you guys enjoyed this retouching tutorial, and I will see you guys back in the next video. Goodbye.